Hello, friends, and welcome back to another one of Neo Toys' horribly edited, nearly incoherent, mostly self effacing uh, DIY construction videos. So, yeah, this is the end product. So, um, if you actually can make it all the way through the video, this is uh, this is what you'll be building, assuming you have a workshop and a bunch of esoteric uh, expensive tools like I do. Anyway, uh, I just love uh, lateral bookcases, don't you? I mean, they're just so much better than uh, those really tall ones that can fall over and crush you in, in, during an earthquake. Anyway, yeah, so uh, one little note I wanted to make now that the project's finished. Um, I ended up using 3-inch screws instead of 2-inch screws for all the fastening because there was just a little bit of... Um, tear out happening and I didn't like that so yeah I guess that's all I had to say so yeah it looks like a million bucks after it's been sanded am I right uh thanks for watching friends um retroactively and uh please enjoy the rest of the video thank you all right step one get yourself a four by eight foot sheet of plywood this is three quarter inch CDX, which is my preference just for something nice like a bookcase, which is um, an indoor kind of thing. Okay, next step, you're going to want to mark off one foot increments along the short end of the sheet. So there's going to be three lines, basically. And you're going to want to do that in the middle of the sheet and at the other end of the sheet as well. So once you got your lines ticked off, you want to basically use a straight edge to connect those. And the center one is basically just for reference to make sure that you don't have warp going in either direction. Hopefully you have a really nice long straight edge like this um, 1x2 that I have here. Um, yeah, and then you're going to want to just draw your lines down all of the intersecting measurements that you made earlier. So yeah, it should look like this when you're done, just four lanes, each one 12 inches apart. And if you're really confident, you can actually skip this step and just use the guide for cutting the straight edge. But um, I, I like to be ultra precise, so I'm constantly doing this kind of like over overactive um, marking markup just to make sure that everything is the way I want it to be. All right, so this next part is kind of ridiculously complicated, but there's a good reason for that. Um, so here's my straight edge. I've got three clamps, one at each end, then one over there on the other end, which is basically just to prevent bowing of the guide. So this uh, piece of wood stabilizes the straight edge so that it can't bow while the skill saw is sliding along. And uh, I made this little cheat sheet here on the bottom of my saw so that I know how far it is from either side of the um, sled edge. So it's 38 millimeters on the short side and 92 on the um, wide side. So then I just put those into my um, calipers and I use that to make sure that my guide is uh, parallel to the line I want to cut. Now you might have noticed I'm cutting outside. I'm cutting the piece off leaving the guide um, intact. Also, I just want to point out, always use a square just to make absolutely certain that you're not at an angle, even after using guides. Saves you a lot of trouble later on. So, uh, yes, this board that I'm cutting is actually going to drop because of the way I'm cutting. Underneath my workbench, I'm basically cutting through that space between the bench edge and these melt crates, which basically catch the piece of wood as it as it falls. 
Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much how I'm gonna cut all these pieces from the main piece. And so there's what a successful cut looks like. Pretty much cut the pencil line in half all the way down the length. So everything's working how it's supposed to. All right, and here they are, the four one foot thick pieces. <laughs> As you can see, the variance is negligible. Maybe a millimeter, a fraction of a millimeter. So not bad for the measurements and the saw guide and more or less what came down to freehand aside from having the straight edge. So the next thing I'm gonna do is basically grade each piece. The nicest one is gonna go on the top of the bookshelf, which incidentally happens to be this piece here, despite the fact that it has a pretty severe cosmetic defect there. Otherwise, it's the nicest of all the pieces. Um, as most people will know, plywood has a nice side and an ugly side, so these ugly sides are all gonna go down, uh, so they're less visible. And that's really important when you're Cutting the dados for all the pieces. Um, yeah, the second nicest piece will probably be the middle shelf. And that's probably this one, despite having some really ugly patching work glue stuff on the back here. Um, the truth is, it's you're only going to see probably this much of the the shelf realistically because the top shelf is going to be right up here above it so that's going to be my middle shelf and then the bottom shelf probably the ugliest of them all which is this piece here on the end and then this one will be cut up to make the dividing sections between the three lateral shelves all right, so the next part is cutting the dividers in the sides. So this one eight foot piece is gonna be cut into four two foot pieces. All right, so that board has been cut into four two foot sections. Now these two two foot sections are each going to be cut into one foot sections. And that's that, so now I've got all the dividers and the sides of the shelves. All right, so now I'm measuring out the dados and this is the top piece which I have flipped upside down because the dados are going to go on the inside of the shelving. Now this is a really quick and easy and dirty way to take measurements for the dados, basically using one of the pieces of plywood to act as a straight edge and draw that line. Um, now, in terms of the measurement, it's a little tricky because it's an eight foot um, piece of wood that we then need to break up into three s sections of approximately equal length. And the math on that is a little <laughs> unideal. So my little workaround here is that basically you can see the line already there that's uh, taking off three quarters of the full length. And then once again on the opposite end, now, the first pencil line I make is at 32 inches. Then I'm going to flip the tape around and start over again from this side. So, once again, I'm using the one of the shelving parts to measure the dado width. Then measuring from this edge here, 32 inches to here, which is where I'm going to make my next line. And then I'm going to use the um, plywood shelf once again to measure dado here. In here so what that gives you is if you reduce the three quarters here for the that dado what you get is about 31 or more accurately like 31 and a, a quarter approximately and then if you measure the central section you basically get 31 and a quarter on center and uh, so it's more or less a third structurally, which is what I want personally is to have the maximum, you know, structural support, which uh, is if ideally you would have this, you know, exactly at a third 
but also it's a little more convenient for the sake of consistency to just measure 32 inches from the edge and have that be your guideline. So I'm setting my three quarter inch dado router bit to a quarter inch um, depth and that's going to basically be for these edges. It's going to go right out to the edge and it's going to go down a quarter inch. So once again I'm using my calipers to get the distance here and this time I'm using extruded aluminum L as my um, straight edge clamping it on both sides because I want these dados to be ultra precise. Now in terms of how I'm routing this, I'm not routing it like you would expect lengthwise. I'm routing it like this along with the uh, flat edge. I just think it gives uh, slightly better results and it's easier to measure for. I did a little test cut just to check to see if the data was the right width because I'm doing an edge data. It's a little more complicated. Um, and it turned out to be just a little short, so I'm going to recalibrate my calipers by a millimeter and reset the guide. Always good to just do little checks like this occasionally, save yourself a lot of time. Just a little pissed off here because it's not perfectly flush, even though it should have been after I remeasured, but it's not a big deal. I can just either sand off this edge or leave it the way it is. It's really, it's just a minor almost negligible cosmetic issue. Now that I've got my stupid calipers adjusted properly it's basically perfect alignment and thankfully now that I have that adjustment locked in it'll pretty much guarantee accurate data for the rest of the project. Yeah so from this point forward it's basically just cutting a shit ton of datos. So a little bit too late, I had this epiphany after already making one of these bookcases and this having been the second one that I could just do all three dados simultaneously. Just requires a little more planning and clamping intelligence. Um, I'm using a thicker L bracket because I was noticing my thinner one was bowing just a little, which normally wouldn't even be an issue with aluminum but you know don't want to take any chances yeah so an obvious uh wonderful benefit to this is greater precision since they're all lined up on this end the dados will be perfectly aligned vertically um when i put in the dividers so yeah this method is just superior in every way all right just a couple of notes here these are the two two foot sections and the dado is right at the um, one foot mark on center and once again I clamp them together to give me this nice consistency here um, that is crucial for the middle section to fit in which I wanted to show this little cross section here it's kind of like an I-beam with uh, two two quarter inches removed and one quarter inch left for both of these and that's for these uh, one foot dividers to slot into those days. Oh goody, the funnest part, assembly. Haha, <laughs> so I'm using the uh, two, two inch T25 stainless steel screws and of course I do drill uh, countersinking pilot holes first see this is the top on the side uh, just two screws for starters because basically what I'm doing right now is just measuring for the middle piece to slide into these dados and as you can see and as you would expect since all three of the the top bottom and the middle are eight feet long the issue of course is that the dados are approximately um, half an inch what I meant to say is that the uh, shelf, uh, middle shelf length is approximately half an inch too long. So basically I have to cut off half an inch with the skill saw of both ends in order to get it to slide 
into those dados. So for obvious reasons, this is probably the most pain in the ass cut in the whole project. And that's partially because my skill saw um, has the wide side of the sled on the right side instead of the left side. And uh, the problem with that is the motor sticks way out. So any kind of a guide I want to use basically has to have an almost zero clearance because the sled is only about a quarter, a little over a quarter inch thick. So yeah, anyway, this is my setup, kind of uh, uh, complicated, but it, it works. All right, so that's done, yay. I just wanted to illustrate that this is definitely friction fit. So you're gonna wanna use a soft mallet like this one to knock the plywood down into the dados. Alternately, and this is kind of a fun little hack, you can use a clamp and just squeeze it down into that dado. Works just as well. Oh, it truly is a beautiful thing when everything comes together. Now I put this up on little spacers just to make it a little bit easier for me to get the dados all the way down to their depth because incidentally this middle shelf actually sticks out about a eighth of an inch on the back. What's that? Do I sand? <laughs> Why yes I do. All eight inches in fact because it makes it a lot easier for it to slide into those dados. So I did cheat a little. I used my extra long pipe clamp to help cinch up those joints. Now look at that. Pretty damn straight. Alright, so on to the final phase, which is basically just sanding all of the sharp edges, sanding off all the pencil lines, sanding off all the lumber mark, and... And this is basically ready to go.